Hello everyone, today we're going to be looking at the disc, belt, and spindle sanders. Um, over here on the left, uh, this disc and belt sander, it's actually kind of a two-in-one tool. And then over here on the right, this is our spindle sander. So these are very beneficial uh, for the projects that we're going to be working on uh, to smooth out anything that's cut on the band saw or the scroll saw. Um, and I do have a couple different size disc and belt sanders in the shop. Um, and the same thing with the spindle sander, there's different size spindle drums um, that we can put on there depending on the curve that we want to sand. So um, if you're confused with what these tools are, basically think of it as uh, sandpaper. Uh, the disc sander has a circular piece of sandpaper that when you turn it on, it spins around and it'll smooth out your piece. Belt sander, same concept. Uh, it's a belt of sandpaper when you start the machine spins around again, smooths out your piece. Okay, let's start with some of the safety rules. So looking at the parts of the disc and belt sander, let's start with the disc sander. So the disc sander spins in a counterclockwise motion. And the most important thing to remember with the disc spinning counterclockwise is you only wanna work on the left side of the table. So what you would do is you would place your piece of material and you'd sand back and forth on a curve an outside curve to smooth out that piece, okay? You would never wanna put a piece of material on the right side or the upward travel of the disc because what's gonna happen is that piece is gonna to wanna to fly right up in the air. Lay your piece of material on the work table and you're gonna to wanna to sand back and forth and the disc is gonna spin in a angle, um, so you really can't put this on the wrong side. Always wanna make sure your work is flat on the table though um, because if your fingers are underneath there, uh, that could pinch your fingers, okay? So a couple of safety rules for the disc and belt sander. Always sand on the downward travel of the disc. Okay, what that means is what I just mentioned. You only work on the left side or the downward travel of the disc sander. Stand directly in front of the disc when using the machine. So when you're using the disc sander, you always want to stand directly in front. And the reason for that is if you accidentally lose control of your piece, your piece is going to want to fly to the, off to the side. Standing directly in front of it, that'll keep you safe in case you were to lose control of your piece of material. Board should be large enough to be held firmly with both hands, so you never want to sand anything that you can't have a firm two-hand grip on. Excessive pressure. Excessive means a lot. Excessive pressure on the board will cause burning of your material and the disc or belt. So you never want to put too much pressure into, your, uh, into the disc or belt sander when you're trying to sand your piece. Nice, smooth, even pressure, um, then you'll, you won't get any of those burn marks or ruin the disc or belt. Keep your fingers away from the abrasive surface of the sander. The abrasive surface is the actual sandpaper, so abrasive means very rough. Be sure the belt is tracking evenly on the machine. So on the belt, these rollers, these bearings can come loose, and the disc is gonna, or I'm sorry, the belt is gonna wanna move back and forth. Please come get me immediately if that's the case because we do need to make an adjustment so that belt doesn't come flying off. Uh, the disc and belt sander is used for outside curves. So if you're confused as to what an outside curve is, let's take a look at this material that this person is sanding. This right here is an outside curve. It curves to the outside. An inside curve curves to the inside. Okay, that is right here where my mouse is. Okay, so outside curve, inside curve. If you're wondering how do you sand an inside curve, that is what the spindle sander is for. So the spindle sander has a sanding drum that spins around, and this is your work table. So basically, you'd lay your material flat on the table, the spindle will spin around and round and round with the sanding drum, and that'll smooth out your piece. Again, various size uh, spindles or drums depending on the curve that you're sanding. So never operate the sander with a torn drum. So down in the bottom right, that sand, um, we never want to operate that if that's ever damaged because what could potentially get caught and you'll lose control of it. Surface, so that's that sandpaper surface. You never want to touch that when the sander is running. I uh, use the correct spindle drum for the curve to be in this picture in the bottom right corner of sanding. So they're using a very large, lock the table at the correct angle. So our table are adjustable depending on uh, the type of uh, is an adjustable table. Always just make sure it's locked in place so it doesn't move. Hold the board firmly. So the spindle sand will have control of your piece because it's obviously moving round and round. This is your sanding. So you always want to have a nice firm two-hand in the photo in the bottom corner. 
Always with the even pressure of the board against the spindle rotation. Uh, center is inside curve. So those are your inside curves. So that is it for the spindle sander, the disc and belt sander. Pretty straightforward. In order to pass this test, you need to score a 10 out of 12 or higher, which is an 85% uh, and good luck on the test.